Michael and I met in 1981. He was a young businessman at that time. He had his first business. It was called Airlink. It was a small commuter airline and I was selling phone systems. I remember when I met him, I asked him his goals and he very, very clearly said, I want to make a difference in my industry. And it was so gratifying for me to see him actually fulfill that dream. His dream was vague. He, he just knew that he was gonna make a difference in some way. I don't believe Michael ever doubted himself. He saw the obstacles and the challenges. He was a forward thinker. He could see his way through those. And because of that, he was able to be in a pretty straightforward path as he was building Atlas. I remember we flew into JFK. It was a frigid day in January. The first, one of the very first employees came and picked us up in this rickety old van that had Atlas, it had the Atlas Air on the side of it. And it was, it was just hilarious. We went to this very small office that had metal desks, had no dividers, had no employees. It was bare bones from the start. And Michael never forgot those memories. He remembered coming from humble beginnings. And I think that translated into what he did every day. He remembered where he had been. And as he carried forward, he never wanted to forget that. I think his vision for what the company could be has been realized. Michael had a personal relationship with so many business owners and leaders. He knew about their personal lives. He knew that because he spent time with them on the phone, morning till night, talking with people around the world. He knew about their personal experiences in business. He knew about their families. He was so in touch with his people. That carried over to how he felt he needed to treat his customers. He knew them well and he wanted to treat them well. As he led Atlas, that was probably the premier philosophy about what they did and why they built such a successful company is that customer care did come first. My role as the wife of an entrepreneur was to remain faithful. I felt like I had hitched my wagon to a star. And of course that star was Michael. He was a wonderful man, even when we were in a down period and money was pretty scarce, he would take care of us. The first place he would go after he was finished with his business was home. The real reason the company was named Atlas um, falls on me. We were trying to brainstorm and come up with a name for the company. I came up with Atlas. Atlas was bearing the world on his shoulders and just the strength and the power that that statue represents drew me to that name. We had hired a very talented designer in Denver to come up with the logo. And I remember being in the house with no furniture. We had the logo or the beginnings of the logo laid out on the floor. We were there with this designer critiquing it. And it, it was just amazing because here Atlas has grown to what it is today and it started on the floor of a house with no furniture. I remember how hard he worked and as he built the company and did influence the industry, I'm excited to see these planes and know that he's the one who started all that. It was his vision and his tenacity that made it happen. And I would just want to say to all the employees, Michael would be so proud of you. You've carried on his legacy in a great way. You've brought pride and hard work to the company. He would be proud and grateful to all of you. Happy anniversary, Atlas Air. <laughs>